Tenet had us scratching our heads from the word go, but there is one question that has left us really thinking. Tenet was a complicated and confusing experience, to say the least, with mind-blowing visuals and eardrum-bursting audio mixed with some high-concept plot points and puzzles as hard to decipher as your partner's passive-aggressive texts. Tenet will certainly need several rewatches to fully understand and appreciate, but there are certainly lots of details and plot points that they've left open to interpretation, and in the absence of clear meaning comes some of the greatest and most outlandish theories. And uh, because we're a sucker for a good theory here at Screen Rant, we're gonna address one of the main ones doing the rounds right now. Spoiler alert, Neil is actually Max, the son of Cat and the villain Satyr. In this video, we will take a dive into this theory, inverting ourselves through the plot as we try to crack and decipher an interesting and tasty theory. We will look at the evidence supporting this theory and what makes it plausible and put it up against the facts that suggest that it is unfortunately nothing more than a rumor. So get yourself a bag of frozen peas and get ready for your head to hurt all over again as we go back to the world of Tenet. And again, beware, for spoilers lie within. Backstories and character development are, to be quite honest, sidelined for stunning action set pieces and mind-bending concepts in Nolan's movies, with the events themselves often being the main attraction, as opposed to the characters who are often just along for the ride. It's one of the most controversial aspects of Nolan's movies, with some using this as his harshest criticism while others don't seem to care. For instance, Dunkirk focused more on the event and tried to be in keeping with history as opposed to focusing on any real individual and their lives outside of the event. Tenet is a similar kettle of fish, with most of the names being monosyllabic, such as Neil, Cat, and Ives. Or in the case of John David Washington's character, not even giving them a name and just calling them the protagonist. They also don't have much of a backstory. We have no real idea where they come from or who these people are. They are just tools for Nolan's plot. But this lack of detail allows us to fill in the blanks for him and try to read between the lines, whether that be a good thing or a bad thing. This often generates fan theories, and while we may never get the validation we so desperately seek to find out whether they're true or not, they can have more credence to them than we first believe. We know Nolan makes us work in his movies, and while he gives us information through exposition, he often leaves us trying to piece together the rest. One theory that's come out of this is that Robert Pattinson's Neil is actually the son Son of Cat and Satyr, Max. Before we can address this theory, we have to process what we know about Neil, and the blunt answer to that is not a lot. We know that Neil is running through the timeline backwards. He's the one who saved the protagonist at the start of the movie during the opera siege, and it was his death that led to them being able to complete the temporal pincer movement and stop Satyr's dastardly plans. We also know that Neil has known the protagonist for a long time, or at least longer than the events of the movie, and that it was the protagonist who hired Neil to join his ranks. It's the reason why Neil knows the protagonist doesn't drink on the job and from the get-go seems to have a liking or trust of the character. Could that be because the protagonist was Neil's pseudo-father figure? The final shot of the movie is somewhat suggestive, with the protagonist looking at both Cat and Max after discovering it was he who founded the Tenet and that he must go back further to set the events in motion. But it is the emphasis on the final shot on Cat and Max, coupled with Neil's bombshell just before, that gives us pause and makes us wonder, are Neil and Max one and the same? We also don't know when exactly Neil and the protagonist met. We only know that it was outside of the events of Tenet, but we don't know if that's in the future or in the past. We know that Neil's loop is closed, but the protagonist's future has just begun. We just don't know what point in time that future is. Did he recruit Neil before the start of the movie, or did he recruit him afterwards? If Neil is running through the timeline backwards, it stands to reason that there is a younger Neil also in that timeline, whether it be one who is a few weeks younger or even decades. Could that younger self be Max? Well, let's look into the argument for it, shall we? Like the end of Inception, the ending of Tenet is somewhat open-ended. The main plot points of the story have wrapped up, and we know that the protagonist and co have stopped Seder and saved the day. But we don't really know the who's, why's, and what's of the protagonist's journey outside of the movie. But does that final shot give us a clue? Clue. Since the days of Sergei Eisenstein's Battleship Potemkin, editing has been a significant presence in how we watch movies, with two seemingly separate and independent shots formed together to create an idea or impression that exists outside of the narrative. Editing can almost incept a thought into our head, 
and we know just how much Nolan likes Inception. With the shot of the protagonist figuring out he is to create Tenet matched with the shot of Canon Max, it could potentially imply that both are important to the future or past of the organization. Alternatively, it could be showcasing what the protagonist has to give up to continue on his path. But uh, we'll ignore any other interpretations of that shot for now because, let's face it, it's just not as fun. If the protagonist did know that Max was Neil though, he would ultimately be sending him to his inevitable death and would also have to be convinced to help kill slash take down his own father in some kind of trippy Greek tragedy. But seeing as Seder was too comfortable killing everyone including his son, if Max was Neil then his fate would be set, as if he didn't stop Seder then he would die anyway and not be able to live half the life he did or save his own mother. We also never see Neil or Max at the same time, meaning that they wouldn't worry about potential annihilation if they came into contact. But then again, we don't even see that much of Max, let alone hear from him. Another point for this theory is that the protagonist would probably want to keep the information of Tenet secret, meaning the people that he would inform should be as close-knit as possible. Who is closer than the son of the man who sought to weaponize it and to the woman who killed that man to save the day? There are some similarities between Max's upbringing and physical appearance and Neil's, such as they are first and foremost both English, with Neil arguably being a caricature of an English spy, both privately educated, and both have blondish hair instead of Pattinson's usual brown head of hair. But to be fair, it is a bit of a stretch to call this evidence, especially as Neil is a similar character archetype to not only Nolan's other films, but to the ones who inspired them. To relate Neil to Inception, he has a similar personality and dialect as that of Tom Hardy's Eves, as well as having the physical look of DiCaprio's Cobb, both of whom look somewhat similar to the man himself, Christopher Nolan. Neil is also reminiscent of Roger Moore's iteration of James Bond, and seeing as Nolan was greatly inspired by the feeling of Moore's The Spy Who Loved Me, it's no surprise to see an homage to the character in the form of Neil. The biggest theory that supports this larger theory that Neil is Max is possibly Max's name itself. A lot of fans have theorized that Max's full name is Maximilian, spelt in the French fashion, which in itself says nothing, but just like the movie, if you flip the name around and invert it, it has a new meaning. Maximilian backwards is Neil Mixum, which is a load of gibberish, but if you take the first four letters of it, it reads Neil. Ooh, spooky, right? Unfortunately though, that is just a theory, and not the concrete evidence we wished it to be. But it certainly sounds plausible on paper. Now though, we must look into the argument suggesting that maybe Neil isn't Max after all. The first point against this theory is Neil and Kat's relationship with one another isn't exactly warm. And while Kat probably wouldn't have known that Neil was Max, Neil would have certainly known that Kat was his mother. In fact, Neil seemed extremely cavalier about Kat being hit by the inverted bullet and didn't seem to push saving her life, unlike the protagonist who was desperate to save her. This could have argued arguably been because Neil knew that Cat would make it out alive, but that feels like a stretch. And what would he have done if the protagonist turned around and was like, yeah, there's no point in saving her? That could have made things a little awkward. One of the biggest sticklers of the Neil is Max theory is the age gap. Neil is approximately in his early to mid 30s at the start of the movie, while Max is around 10, meaning that Neil would have inverted himself for at least over a decade, which is a long commitment. Plus the amount of oxygen he would have to intake, the possible health risks, and being alone in isolation for so long work against this theory. Seriously, this COVID-19 isolation has only been going on for months, and I feel crazier than Jack Nicholson in The Shining. It therefore does feel like a stretch that Neil would have inverted himself for that long, and it is more likely that the protagonist probably hired him only a few months or years around the time of the movie's events. Another point is that Neil himself suggests that he is not from the future when he tells the protagonist protagonist, you have a future in the past, suggesting that the protagonist will go back to before the events of the movie and hire Neil rather than hire Max. Nolan himself also seemed to downplay it, and when discussing Neil, seemed to just suggest that Neil was the first thing he came up with, saying that he was a Neil type, whatever that means. This could be a red herring, but with Nolan's track record, it does make sense. There's also a separate theory doing the rounds that it's not Neil who's Max, but instead Aaron Taylor Johnson's Ives. This has some plausibility too, seeing as how Ives knows so much about Tenet and is so devoted to the cause, but also suffers the same drawbacks as Neil is Max. Ultimately though, we don't know the answer to this question, with it feeling like a version of Schrodinger's cat, with Neil being both Max and not Max in almost equal measure. Man, maybe the better title would be Schrodinger's Neil. 
So what do you make of this theory? Do you think that Neil is actually Max? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to the channel for all things Tenet.